What's going on everybody? Good to see you and welcome back to the Potato Boat YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you 15 tips for new players who are just starting Project Zomboid. If you have not got to check out Project Zomboid yet, I highly recommend it. The game hates your guts and is extremely hard, but as you learn and as you progress, it is incredibly fun and it is incredibly rewarding. There's just a huge learning curve at the beginning that once you get past, you'll feel much more confident in your gameplay. So I wanna equip you with the tools and techniques that are gonna help you succeed. So without further ado, let's get into the 15 tips for new players starting Project Zomboid. And as a quick note, if you enjoy this video, you learned something or you overall wanna support the channel, make sure you go down and subscribe, like the video, and make sure you turn on all those notifications so you'd never miss another video. Now to the tips. So let's start at the very beginning. Tip number one is about occupations. Each of these classes give different bonuses that will aid in your playthrough. Some give raw stat boosts, some give different abilities like burglars can hotwire cars right off the rip. And we'll touch on more of that kind of stuff later with skills. And some are a little bit more malleable so you can offer more customization through traits and how you want your class to work. While there's no overtly broken or OP classes, there are classes that are much more beginner friendly than others. I personally recommend going with carpenter or lumberjack if you're new because they come with good physical stats and proficiencies compared to some of the more quote unquote squishier classes. For tip number two, we're gonna move right along through the beginning as well. To pair with these occupations, you're going to need to choose some traits. Traits are positive or negative additions to your class that will impact how you play and what you're effective at and what you generally just suck at. There are positive traits that will make the game better for you and there are negative traits that are gonna make the game a little bit harder in some respects. You may, however, wanna take some negative traits that way you can balance it out with some better positive traits to make the run a little bit more exciting. Some of these negative traits are pretty negligible, such as Smoker. Smoker makes it so your character's stress and unhappiness levels go up over time. However, smoking a cigarette a day can keep the stressies away. You can find cigarettes literally everywhere and they come in massive quantities when you find them. There's also no real downsides like lesser stamina or any lung damage like you would imagine. Just keep a pack of cigarettes on you and you won't even notice that negative trait is in your kit. Balance out some of the positive traits and negative traits to try new things and find your preferred play style. If you're new, here's a build that I'd recommend for newer people. For your occupation, I would choose Carpenter and then under your negative traits, I would take pacifist, prone to illness, smoker, and weak stomach. And then for your positive traits, I would take speed demon, fast reader, fast learner, and handy. This doesn't make an absolutely broken class, but it does give a pretty good start for people who are new at the game. Next up, let's talk spawn locations. For spawn locations, some are easier to navigate than others. There are a total of four locations you can choose from, and we'll go from easiest to hardest. First is Mudraw. It has a low population density, which means less zombies. However, it has a weak loot pool because of it being a poor area with just a few of the larger, more expensive homes to the north. If you're new to the game and you want a light sampling of the game, I would recommend starting in Mudraw. Next, we have Rosewood. Rosewood is a low to mid level area. It's really compact and the hordes will mostly be close to the center of the area. There are two really good locations nearby, but both are pretty difficult to get to slash handle. There's a prison on the outskirts of town with some high quality loot and there's a secret military base to the south. Both are gonna have a lot of zombies, especially the military base. So be prepared to fight and dodge through hordes of zombies if you choose to go to these places. Third, we have Riverside. This is a mid-tier zone. The town is split into two parts, east and west, with west having the better loot areas, but the town has quite a few hordes. It's also really isolated from the rest of the map compared to the other spawn points. So take that how you will. Finally, there's West Point, and West Point has a very thick population density, way higher than all the others. This means tons of hordes, but as a good positive trade-off, it does have the best loot and the best locations for base building compared to the other spawn locations. It's also really close to Louisville, or Louisville, however you say it, which has the highest population density and best loot in the game, but is also subsequently very difficult. With this knowledge, you should be able to pick the starting location that is best for you. Our next tip is really simple. As soon as you spawn in, hit C. C is to crouch, and this is gonna do a few things for you. One, it's gonna help you keep it from making more noise that zombies will hear. 
Two, it'll keep you more out of the line of sight through the windows and door windows. And three, you're gonna get XP towards light footed and sneaking if you're near any zombies. And you're basically getting this passively. Think like Skyrim. If you just walk around crouch, you're bound and determined to gain sneak levels just because you're gonna sneak by things on accident. The next tip is to search the kitchen. Most of the items vital to the start of your game can be found right here. Canned food, perishable foods, can openers, weapons like frying pans and meat cleavers, knives, and so many more things are found right here in the kitchen. Ideally for me, I love to find the meat cleaver, about two good perishable foods and like one or two good canned foods. Good food being defined by that it's lightweight and that it has a ton of calories. That way your character will stay more full and more satisfied. Personally, as a, as a always pick up item, I always love to pick up cereal because it's light and it has a ton of calories. So if you see cereal, I would say grab it. This is also where you'll probably find water containers like water bottles, beer bottles, juice bottles after you've drank through them, mugs, bowls, kettles, stuff like that. Make sure if you see something that says container that looks like it's for water, like any kind of cups or bowls, grab it immediately, take it directly to the sink and right click and choose the option to fill up that bottle. Because as you go along your journey, instead of having to actively find water to drink, you will drink from it as you become thirsty and you can refill these at any sink or water station. The next tip is to take your clothes off. Okay, maybe not your clothes, but you should search the house and tear up any clothes that you can find that you aren't better off wearing. This will give you the ripped cloth that you can use as bandages. And I always keep like five to 10 of these on me. That way I get any kind of cut or bruise. I can address it very quickly and keep moving on. And just as an added note on this one, make sure after you get a dirty bandage and you change it, make sure you're washing them. That way you can continue to reuse them. Tip number seven is if the bathroom has cabinets, make sure to search them. This is one of your best early chances on finding medicine without having to find like a medical building or a hospital. Stuff like painkillers, beta blockers, bandages, disinfectants, any of these could literally save your life because zombies are not the only thing that can kill you in Zomboid. You can sustain injuries vaulting fences, clearing window glass, and running through the woods that can cut you up and leave you with cuts that if not treated can become infectious. You'll need to find these better medical supplies that we've listed to take care of more serious injuries and infections that you'll sustain while traversing the world. No one wants to play a zombie game and die because you got a deadly infection from doing some parkour over a fence. So now that you've got food, you've got water, you got clothes and heels and weapons to slay the oncoming horde, you need to start looking for one of the other key parts of survival. And that is tip number eight, shelter. Finding a place to call home is actually pretty important. Will the first place you call home be your forever home? Definitely not. But is it worth creating an initial base of operations to plan your next move and start storing some of your loot? Absolutely. If the house you spawn in isn't well suited for your survival, I'd recommend not really going too far while looking because the more you're out and about, the more likely you are to befall misfortune. Personally, I love a place that has a kitchen that already has decent food in it, a TV in the house, two stories if I can find it, and drawers or boxes for me to store stuff in. Also, I always make sure that none of the windows or doors are busted down. It may not be a hard and fast rule, but that's definitely my preference. That way I don't have to worry about automatically repairing something or an opening where zombies can just come right in. Regardless of where you choose, make sure to close all the curtains immediately so that you have a less likely chance of being spotted from outside by zombies. If the window or door doesn't have curtains, you can take curtains from the upstairs windows or grab sheets from closets and put them over the windows. And you can also steal these from neighbors' houses if your house doesn't have enough. No matter what you do though, make sure your bottom floor windows are covered from all wandering eyes. Now it's cool that you have a place to stash all your stuff, but what about when you're out and on the go and you need a place to store that sweet, sweet loot or you need access to that beautiful inventory you've built up? Well, tip number nine addresses just that and is that you are gonna need some kind of bag. Now your character has a base carry weight for your inventory that's kind of dependent on your strength stat and it's enough to carry some essentials, but definitely not enough to take you as far as you wanna go and to become the ultimate survivor. As you travel and loot through the world, you'll find all kinds of different containers that you can stash your stuff in. By far, the best are backpacks and duffel bags. You can attach them directly to your back and completely forget they're there. They usually have a really decent carry weight and sometimes they have a phenomenal carry weight. Then right below them, I would say there's fanny packs. 
you can attach these to your front or your back and they usually don't have great carry weight but it's almost like an inventory extension most players that i've seen play this game use fanny packs for stuff like specifically having meds or ammo or something like that because they are ones that you don't have to actually hold but they don't really carry a lot then final option is containers in general any kind of bags that you find can be used to hold your inventory things like grocery bags shopping bags trash bags anything that you can find with the bag you can carry in your secondary hand and store loot in they do have that increased carrying weight that you want but they come at the big risk that if you mantle or climb things you are probably going to drop them and if you're like me it's going to take you way too long to notice that you dropped it and you have no idea where it is so early on beggars can't be choosers i definitely recommend picking up even a trash bag to store your stuff in but find a backpack or something you can wear as soon as possible and hey congratulations you've officially reached the base level of survival food water shelter storage all acquired and now after all this work the game really begins there's plenty to do and there are massive dangers ahead so much more dangerous than the hordes you're going to run into so let's get some next steps down that'll get you on your way to becoming the best survivor that you can be and what better way to become the last man standing than to become overpowered the best way to becoming overpowered is you need to level up your skills we started to touch on skills at the beginning of the video when we talked about occupations and traits but skills are a little bit more in depth and they are different stats and abilities that you can train to become stronger, faster, quieter, deadlier, more efficient, and more likely to survive in the game when all the loot is looted and the power is turned off and the water is turned off. To see all of your possible skills, simply hit H to open up your health menu, then select the skills tab. This will show you all the possible areas that you can level up in your character. I'll have a more in-depth skill guide coming soon, but training each stat is pretty fairly simple. Repeating tasks that fall within each specific category get you XP towards levels in that skill. So do you want better sneaking? Sneak near zombies. You want better short blunt, which is just short blunt weapons? Then you use short blunt weapons. You want better carpentry? Get yourself the right tools and start tearing stuff down to build that XP. Spending time doing these things helps level your character up and makes you stronger and smarter. As an added bonus around the world, there are a ton of skill books and reading these skill books will give you a boost in XP for whatever category that you're reading in. For example, maybe you want to level up first aid. If you have zero levels in first aid, consider taking the time to find and read the first aid for beginners book before you start doing a bunch of healing tasks on yourself or if you're playing multiplayer others. This will give you a boost in XP for the first two levels of first aid, at which point you can read first aid for intermediates to give you an XP boost for the next two levels and so on and so forth. Skill books are a great way to make your grind more efficient. So make sure you keep your eye out for the books that will help you. Just keep in mind that they're a bit heavy to carry around and they take a little while to read. Likewise, in the early days, you can get an added bonus by watching TV programs at certain times on the Life and Living channel. Those specific times are actually 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m., and it's super hard to tell when that is, so make sure you have a clock in your house or make sure to pick up a wristwatch off of one of the zombies that you kill. And make sure you find yourself a TV, whether it's in your house or another house, turn it on, turn the volume to no louder than two, and tune in to the Life and Living channel, and you can get free XP into levels such as cooking, carpentry, fishing, farming, forging and trapping it's a really great way to get xp and levels for free now tip number 11 is going to reference an earlier tip do you remember when i was talking about running through the trees or tripping over fences and getting a bunch of damage well there's some good news you can avoid most of the injuries associated with this if you approach them correctly for fences make sure you don't sprint over them as often as you can help it simply walk to the fence and press e this should save you from cutting yourself on the fences while trying to vault. Now, as far as the woods go, you can actually completely navigate the woods without ever walking through a tree. Simply right click on the map and select walk here, then click into or past the woods or wherever you want to go. Your character will automatically choose the path of least resistance with the least number of obstacles and will avoid all of these trees, 
saving you from all the cuts and bruises. It's really handy in a pinch when you're trying to get away from a horde of zombies, but you don't want to get yourself all cut up or tripped up in the woods. Now for tip number 12, I have a question. Do you crave safety, speed, shelter, and storage? Well, then it might be a really good idea for you to get yourself a car. Cars are extremely useful in Project Zomboid when used right and can really make or break some situations. The first step is actually finding a functional gassed up car. To tell if a car is functional or if it's got gas in it, simply walk up to the hood, right click on it and select vehicle mechanics and a menu will come up that shows you the condition of each part of the car and if there's any gas in it. Cars can be functional but have no gas so you're gonna have to find gas and a gas station to get some fuel if you want to fuel a particular empty car. Or if your car has just barely gas in it, you can roll up to a gas pump, right click on it and fill it back up as well. Once you're sure your car isn't too badly damaged and you're all gassed up, now you need to get the thing running. There are two methods to getting a car running. One, which is the simplest, is to find the key. Keys can be in the glove box of the car. If it's unlocked, you can get it in search. They can be on the ground near the car, on a body near the car, or if a car is parked by a house, it could be in the house or in a body in the house. The second option, however, is to hotwire the car. If you want to hotwire a car, you're going to need to take either the burglar occupation or you're going to need to level up two points in the mechanic skill and one point in the electrical skill. If a car isn't unlocked, you're going to need to smash the window as well. Make sure that you have a weapon equipped in your primary hand or your character will smash it with their elbow and you will probably sustain some kind of injury that you're going to have to take care of. So once you're in the car, press the V button and click on the hotwire option. It may not succeed the first time you try it, so keep doing that until the car starts. But then, voila, you are the proud owner of a quote unquote brand new car. Once you have the car going, you've basically got a small house on wheels. You can store stuff in it, you can keep you protected, and it can keep you mobile. Just be aware of two main things. One, the noise will attract zombies. You can use this to your advantage to pull hordes where you want them to be and away from buildings you want to be get into, but it can also put you in a tight spot if you park your car near a place, it may attract zombies to that place. So be aware of these things. Also, I know it's extremely tempting, but you'll want to avoid hitting zombies with your car as it will damage your car and make it inoperable at some point. I will note it is extremely fun. So maybe just have two cars or I, I don't know when you're when your car is just almost over, just end its life by taking on many zombies. It's your car. You do what you want. Now, during your time in Zomboid, you may want to know how your character is doing. And thankfully, the game decided to put in a mechanic that tells you the condition of your character through what we're going to talk about in tip number 13, Moodles. Moodles are the game's status effect icons that appear on screen to let you know what needs addressed. I think I'm going to do a video on Moodles that explains what each one is and how to take care of it, but do not ignore your Moodles. They tell you when you're hungry, tired, thirsty, bleeding, well-fed, in pain, bored, depressed, and much, much more. Addressing Moodles as they appear and keeping the number of them on screen to a minimum is vital to your success in Project Zomboid. Take care of the things as they pop up and don't put stuff off. Not caring for these status effects is a path to a very quick death, so keep your eyes sharp. So even with all this preparation and caution, you're gonna have to fight off zombies at some point. So tip number 14, let's cover the basics of combat. Combat honestly can be frustrating at times, but there are some safe practices that you should keep in mind. First of all, let's make it easier for you to tell who you're fighting. On the main menu, go to the options menu and select the display tab. Look down the list until you find aim outline and make sure that this drop down is switched to any weapon. That way, no matter who you're targeting and no matter what you have in your hand or if you have nothing in your hands, it's going to highlight who's in your range and who you're targeting. This makes fighting and kiting so much easier. Now to actual combat, when you're in the game, you're going to have to hold your right click to get into your fighting stance. And this is gonna be your bread and butter when fighting the undead with unarmed, with melee, with guns, whatever you have, this is how you're going to fight people and figure out who's in your range. To fight effectively early on, make sure you're taking on no more than two enemies. Any more than that, and you're liable to get bit, exhausted, or a plethora of other things. 
once you get better gear, once you get better weapons, you can take on more people. But early on, cap it at two. If you have more than that following you, it's best probably to run. Now, once you've decided it's go time and it is time to fight, you wanna right click and hold as you swing your weapon with left click and walk backwards at the same time. This should keep the zombies from biting you, should allow you to keep landing hits and keep you relatively safe while engaging in combat. If a zombie falls and you decide to kill it, make sure to stand on it, aim for the head and keep stomping or swinging. Zombies that are on the ground are incredibly vulnerable. So make the opportunity count. If you don't have a weapon yet, you can still use your bare hands to try and push a zombie down and stomp it out. But keep in mind, it may take a few tries to actually get the zombie to fall down. I definitely recommend getting a melee weapon as they are really effective in this game. I honestly would never recommend guns. Sure, there's probably other people that will tell you different things about guns, but for me, they're never worth it. They're loud, they're heavy, you have to manage ammo. You're definitely gonna be attracting more things onto your location. And unless you have a built-in gun skill like the veteran class or the police officer have, your character is absolutely dookie with a gun. You are better off swinging a stick or a griddle pan than you are having a shotgun, especially in the early game. Leave the guns at home, take care of things the old fashioned way by beating zombies to death with your favorite meat cleaver. And now the big final tip. And the biggest thing to remember is that this game is really punishing and you are going to die. Heck, it even freaking says it on the loading screen at the beginning. Accepting these two facts will make your playthrough way more enjoyable. Your best course is to remember the, these basics, set goals, learn, try new things, and find which way to play is the most fun for you. This game is extremely open-ending and there are a ton of different ways that you can approach it. So make sure you're having the most fun with your survival experience. If you crave some new ways to play or want some quality of life changes, make sure to check out the mods for the game. There are an insurmountable amount of mods, so find what you need to keep the experience fresh. But above all else, make sure you're having fun. And those are our 15 tips for getting started in Project Zomboid. What did you think? Did you agree with all of our tips? Are you a brand new player? Are you a veteran player? Do you have things that you wish that we would have added to the list? Well, add all that stuff down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If this was helpful, if things needed edited or changed, we would love to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel and we appreciate it. Also leave a thumbs up to let us know that we're doing a good job and hit that bell. That way you never miss a video, but until next time, everyone, I hope you have a great day and thank you for tuning into the video. We'll see you in the next one.